I'm going to talk about astronomical seeing. I'll explain what it is and how it affects both visual observing and imaging. For you imagers out there, it is important to understand how the seeing selection affects your sky tool's results, which can help to avoid unnecessary frustration. What is seeing? It's common to hear someone new to the hobby happily claim, after a really good night of observing with their telescope, that the seeing was great. The more experienced among the group will maybe wince a bit and smile at them, realizing that they probably think that seeing is a general term for how clear, dark, or transparent the sky is, or maybe even, I had a great time. Astronomical seeing, or just seeing for short, is a measure of how steady the atmosphere is. Poor seeing makes the stars twinkle to the unaided eye and can make them boil and jump about in the eyepiece. On an image, poor seeing can show up as bloated stars. Great seeing means that the air is so steady that we can see or image the highest detail on the moon and planets, and the stars in an image may appear as small pinpoints. When stacking images, it is often easier to combine images of similar seeing quality. The quality of the seeing depends, of course, on the weather conditions. One thing to be aware of is that the air is typically more turbulent after the sun sets, because the temperature is changing rapidly. If the jet stream is located overhead from your location, this can also degrade the seeing. The quality of the seeing is also determined by how much air you are looking through, so it is always best directly overhead and degrades closer to the horizon. At an altitude of 30 degrees, you are looking through twice as much air as overhead which can make the seeing much worse. This is why it is much more difficult to get high quality views or images of Mercury, which is always close to the horizon. The seeing has to be extremely good for it to be steady that low. Now that we understand what seeing is, let's take a look at the seeing selection in sky tools. The seeing is technically part of your location settings. If you press the set weather button, you can set the default or typical seeing here. The best way to think of this setting is as the typical seeing on a night that you typically do your observing. This will act as a default value. This value will be used for generic planning into the future. You can adjust it for specific nights on the various planning tools. The seeing scale is divided into six categories, from excellent to bad. To the right of each of these general descriptions are the corresponding values on the Pickering seeing scale and the seeing in terms of the apparent size of the stars. The Pickering scale goes from P1 to P10, with P1 being the worst, and P10 being the best. The legendary astrophotographer Damien Peach has a page on his website with visuals that accompany the Pickering scale. Click on Published Works and Articles and scroll down. The size of the stars can be measured directly on images. What is measured is called the full width at half max, or FWHM. Check your image processing software to see if it has a way to measure FWHM, or star profiles. If you can display a star profile, with units of arc seconds, the FWHM is the width of the profile halfway up. Regardless of the scale you use, match the value to the selection as closely as possible, or use the general descriptions. If using the descriptions, such as average or good, it is best to calibrate your expectations first, via the Pickering scale, or by measuring the FWHM. Always remember, the seeing selection is set for the seeing directly overhead, where it is at its best. Sky tools will use this selection and your weather settings to predict the seeing at different sky altitudes. For visual observers, the seeing selection will affect the calculated quality for a given target object at a given time. It can also affect the calculated difficulty of the target object, as seen in your telescope or binoculars. The seeing selection affects some targets more than others. The Sun, Moon, planets and close double star pairs are the most affected. You may sometimes see a planet suggested in daylight, rather than after dark, usually because it is higher in the sky, and thus affected less by seeing. If you can find it safely, then this will give you the best detailed view on that date. The model takes into account not only planets and double stars, but also other faint star-like objects, such as a moon of Mars, which can be more easily detected when the light is concentrated due to good seeing conditions. Even deep sky objects can be affected. 
Compact objects that are close to your detection limit may become more visible with better seeing. It is important to set the seeing to your expected or measured value for the observation night. Be sure to try changing the seeing setting to observe its effect. When imaging, the calculated quality of your imaging project at a given time can be affected by the choice of seeing. On nights with poor seeing, your calculated imaging quality may not meet the minimum value for your project. To resolve this issue, double-check your seeing selection if you encounter a high-in-sky object in a dark sky that fails to achieve an A quality. The impact of the seeing selection varies based on the image scale and target object, with the sun, moon, planets, and double stars being most affected. However, any compact object can also be impacted by the seeing selection. For stars, you may see two values for SNR. Standard SNR is computed for the total light from the star as measured in a circular aperture, with the sky background subtracted. There is also something called peak SNR. In this case, the SNR is calculated for the peak intensity of the star profile. This can be particularly useful in determining if the star, quasar, or minor planet can be detected on your image or image stack. Unlike the total signal of the star, the peak intensity of the star profile is highly dependent on the seeing. Poor seeing will spread the light out, lowering the intensity of the central peak, and thus lowering the peak SNR. Higher quality seeing will produce a narrower profile, and a higher peak, which will increase the peak SNR and improve the likelihood of detection. In conclusion, astronomical seeing is a crucial factor to consider when observing. It is the measure of the stability of the atmosphere, and affects the appearance of objects in the sky. The seeing selection in sky tools allows you to model these effects. Taking the time to consider the impact of the seeing selection on the sky tools results can help to optimize your observations and avoid frustration. Experiment with changing the seeing setting to understand its effects. Perhaps most importantly, don't force the seeing to a higher quality to achieve the result you want when you know the seeing will be worse. Instead, Consider what Sky Tools is trying to tell you. Wait for a night of good seeing for this target. So there you have it. Clear skies and thanks for watching.